How's it going everyone? It's February 27th and I want to go a little bit more in depth about the snow that we could be seeing in March and the severe weather threat that we do have looming right around the corner. I did want to mention we do have some general thunderstorm watches out right now. You can see it through parts of the Carolinas and Georgia. We also have that general thunderstorm watch through parts of the Ohio Valley. You can see Indiana, Kentucky, West Virginia, and Southwestern PA getting involved here as well and a marginal risk through portions of Ohio, Northeastern Kentucky, and Western West Virginia. We're not expecting to see any tornadoes out of this, although it's not impossible. So people in this area do need to stay weather alert. What we're mainly seeing up here, especially through areas of the Midwest, is some very, very strong winds and the potential for some strong thunderstorms and hail. We also do have some decent winds down here in the Southeast right now. And again, the potential for some strong thunderstorms. Now, next week is when stuff could start to get dicey. We already have a six day outlook that includes a slight and enhanced risk zone. This is pretty rare and the SBC or Storm Prediction Center will only do this when they're very confident in a severe weather outbreak this far out. Speaking of this far out, this is their day seven outlook. This is a slight risk, although I do expect both the day six and day seven outlooks to increase in severity as we get closer. I would not be surprised if a moderate outlook was thrown in here. This severe weather event's really gonna take place next Tuesday to Thursday. This is our Tuesday threat right now, which looks to be the most significant. Even a high risk is on the table right now. Now again, I expect these risk zones to potentially increase in severity and expand, but right now we have portions of Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, even portions of Kentucky and Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas, all of these areas need to be watching because you're in this slight risk zone. And we can see that enhanced zone through portions of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Arkansas right now. I do want to mention right now before I move on, this is a type of event next week, especially Tuesday and Wednesday, that could come with a tornado outbreak and potentially a very serious tornado outbreak. That's why the Storm Prediction Center has already put out these risk zones so far ahead of time to get people prepared. And again, I would not be surprised if we saw this expand even into something like this, just really generally out. And it's not out of the question we could see an enhanced or moderate in this zone as well as we get closer. Most of the time, you'll see they'll wait until we're about 72 hours out to add these higher risk zones. As we move into Sunday and Monday, you'll start to notice a low pressure system moving in from the Pacific Northwest and making its way down into the Central Plains. We'll see that dry air, moist air, cold air, warm air convergence really start to take place in the South Central Plains. As this storm system begins to dig down to the Southeast, we'll really start to see that Gulf moisture and warm air being pulled inland. And our upper and mid-level troughs have continued to show an amplification trend throughout these model runs. We'll have the moisture there. We'll have this strong temperature gradient occurring. We'll have very, very strong winds aloft. Our dew points have continued to trend up and the shear should be in place. Right now, the Storm Prediction Center is expecting the potential for supercells, clusters, and even some QLCS tornadoes. These are tornadoes that are associated with the squall line. I could tell you right now, we could also see some very strong winds associated with this squall line. And I'm talking about winds 60, 70 plus that aren't even associated with a tornado. Of course, flash flooding is something we're going to have to watch as well next Tuesday and Wednesday and potentially Thursday. Although this is a quick moving system, it is expected to drop rainfall at a very, very rapid pace. It's not going to be impossible to see three to four inches in some areas over a very short period of time. Now, this is likely going to be a Wednesday severe weather event for these eastern states. If I were to tell you right now where I think the strongest tornadoes may take place, it's going to be out to the west here. Well, if we do see some tornadoes out to the east, they'll probably be associated with the squall line. So these QLCS tornadoes, although again, lots of things are going to change as we move forward in time and as we get closer to this event. Now, you've probably probably noticed we see a snowstorm to the north. We will have some very cold sinking air behind the system, so we are watching for this system as well. This is something I'll likely talk about a little bit more in my video tomorrow. And this is a little bit farther out towards mid-March, but I do want us to keep our eye on this system right here. It does look like we will have a troughing pattern to support multiple severe weather outbreaks as we push through the middle of March. So although this is at the end of the run, again, this is not an impossibility. Here's our 500 millibar height anomaly about midway through March on the European Ensemble. This type of pattern is perfect for severe weather outbreaks down here in the southeast and south central regions. We would have the ability to pull a lot of moisture off the gulf with this warm air down here to the south, and we would have cooler air sinking in from the northwest. This is kind of the typical setup of when you see these very large scale severe weather outbreaks. And take a look at our 30 day precipitation outlook from our European weeklies. We see this dry air out here to the west. Now this can help promote a dry line, but also this is likely going to be due to this sinking dry cold air. And we can see out east, we want a lot of moisture. Again, this type of pattern is what helps you get some very significant and stability between these two areas. On top of all this, I do want to remind you being in an enzo neutral to a weak La Nina does promote a more meridional troughing pattern. And that is when you tend to have a weaker jet stream that has a lot more troughing and ridging, meaning it really promotes that warm cold air interaction and that moist dry air interaction. All things to consider, and that is why many people are calling for this spring to potentially break records severe weather wise. It's definitely in the cards. This right here is our 32 day snow outlook from our European weeklies. We're obviously still expecting a significant amount of snow to move into the states through the month of March. I would highlight New England and I would highlight the northern Midwest. With the storm track
tracks that we're looking to have, these are definitely some of the areas out east that could have some significant snowfall for the month of March. The Rockies and specifically the Pacific Northwest also could have an above average March. I know a lot of people down in Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah are hoping for this because your snow has been a little bit below average lately. I will say this, our American model does think that we could get some snow a little bit farther down into the south than our European. Again, this is more of an outlook. This could change, but I'm going to keep you guys updated. I just wanted to let you guys know what these weeklies and these extended outlooks are showing. And many people think they're just going to see a permanent warm up right now, and it's just not true. Not yet, except for maybe portions of the south central region, although we'll see. Lastly, our European model is doing something crazy with our stratospheric polar vortex as we approach the middle of March. If this were to happen, especially with us moving into phase eight and phase one of the MJO, it's not out of the question we could see some winter weather very, very far deep into March, potentially down in the central region still. Maybe even a little bit farther southern, although again, the more you push through March, the harder it is to get that freezing air down near the Gulf. I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you like this type of content, feel free to throw me a follow or sub. I make posts like this every single day and I stream every single night. I'll see you in the next video.